Welcome back. back. Welcome back. Uh, we're moving now into our second segment for the morning. And this one, of course, is always, it's, it's all about another day. Now, yeah. this one is actually World Maritime, Maritime. Day. And yes. we've got uh, the major himself, Ports Commissioner, Belize Port Authority, uh, Major Gilbert Swazo. Good morning. Good good welcome. We've been having, we've been having. Uh, President, good morning, Belize. President, good morning to the world. Uh, President, good morning, certainly to the board of um, the board of directors, the management, and the staff of Belize Port Authority. It's always a pleasure, uh, certainly, for me to be here. Yeah. To certainly to share uh, some of the happenings within the maritime and shipping industry. Yeah. Right. It is a. It, you know, it's. It's interesting. Uh, last year, we, 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 I remember celebrating this uh, as well. But for the most part, the information that we actually get from the Port Authority uh, with respect to World Maritime Day is very important. It is a career that a lot of folks might not see as one that is attractive to actually be a seaman. Uh, uh, that, that's, I, I think that's how we refer to them. Seafarers. Yeah. Seafarers. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's get into uh, World Maritime Day and what it actually means and how that is celebrated. Yes, well, World Maritime Day is a day that is set aside by the International Maritime Organization, IMO. They have selected that the third Thursday in September is a day when they will celebrate it uh, throughout the entire world. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly recognizes the industry and the importance of the maritime industry to the world and in particular to the respective countries within. For example, there are over 22 uh, million uh, seafarers across the world. Wow. Uh, and, and it's also a known fact that the merchant marine shipping uh, is the one that takes over 80 to 90 percent of the world goods across for trading across the world. Mm. Uh, so that is important. It's shipping is by far the most efficient and the most cost-effective way of transporting goods from one country to the other. Mm. So Belize, it's no different. Yeah. Uh, a large percent, over 80% over of our goods that comes into this, the shirt, the shoes, the things we eat, the medical supplies, all those things usually come in by ships. And what it do, does it take? It takes people yeah. to run the ships. What is also important to note then that while the fact is that Belize does not build ships mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We do have vessels, international vessels that comes into Belize. And those vessels are all in comparison 25 years and over. So this year's team certainly is new technology for greener shipping. Mm. So what does that simply mean? So if you look at the technology then, it was very dependent on uh, fossil fuel, diesel, right? And before that, what you used to have? You used to have coal, then now diesel. So the intent now is to focus on new technologies for greener shipping for a more sustainable and environmentally friendly kind of shipping. How is that going to happen? What, what, what are they moving into now? Well, looking at different innovation, different technology, uh, with a view then to see uh, what can we go into cleaner fuel, uh, perhaps electric um, generated kind of uh, propulsion. So there is an opportunity where um, businesses, where um, educational institute, research institute can now put their hearts, minds together mm -hmm. with a view now to see what is the next direction for us to go. And there are several solutions now that have been recommended mm -hmm. for us to transition from the fossil fuel into a greener way of propell propelling the vessels that are coming in, that are, tra that are traversing the entire world um, as we speak today. How, right? does, how does Belize's Port Authority uh, collaborate with outside entities to provide this? Because I know you keep saying greener, but uh, how? <laughs> I, when I think about ships, I, I feel like you have to have masses amount of uh, a fuel to, yeah. to, to, to sustain them. So what, are, what is the collaboration like for Belize Port Authority well, to we, make sure this happens? Well, Belize is not an island. Right. Right. 
uh, meaning literally that we do not do things in isolation yeah. in any way or form. And we are part of the nation state that, and, and member state of the International Maritime Organization mm -hmm. and the UN in and by itself. So when you look at the sustainable development goals, right, one of them being perhaps um, one climate change, mm -hmm. that's a big thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then it takes several countries that are collaborating to see how best we can now find solutions mm -hmm. as part of ensuring uh, that we mitigate issues that will affect our climate yeah all right so we are part of that conversation mm -hmm. all right and we are involved in that conversation mm -hmm. in fact i think it was recently when our prime minister was on the world stage making given belize's case and yeah. what belize's were looking towards from the outer world with a view towards climate change yeah. so shipping is part and parcel of that same development goal mm -hmm. right similarly we have um, SD, uh, the, the sustainable development goal 14 sustainable use of ocean seas and maritime marine resources right so we are not doing things in isolation here at all mm -hmm. right so the world set the stage we are part and parcel of that stage of course we have to be in the conversation so now each and every one of us must also look to see how we can get on that bus so that then we are part of the solution yeah. and not continue to be part of the problem and, 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 and i feel you know i i i feel that's definitely the right uh, way to go uh, with respect to us having a voice in in, in making this change simply because then eventually these things will be coming to us like you mentioned we're not we're, we're not, not making not ships here no, no we're, we're not we're not making there. ships we're not we're not dealing with that whole fuel situation mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. so for us to have that voice especially in the world stage saying you know what we need to be a a, a, a very big part of what's going on here that is a, that is a kudos in itself yes. but let's get to seafaring on a whole but let me be just before sure. we, i think before we get there I believe I need to mention the fact that new technology, right, this innovation mm -hmm. provides an opportunity in and by itself. Yes. Right? Opportunity for innovation for our young students, right, perhaps even UB, to look at what ways, um, what are the things that we can join hands together to come on deck to find the solutions and say, you know what, we will go into the ports, right, and how do we get and greener port, greener ships, right? What are some of the solutions that we need to then advocate for those ships coming into Belize uh, to help for them to equip so that do not, they do not affect our um, environmental space? Yeah, yeah. Right? So there is opportunity for innovation. So it simply means then that that opportunity lends itself for education opportunities as well, mm -hmm. employment opportunities. So that is the way how I believe we need to look at it that this is an opportunity that the world stage is providing for us and we must also provide it nationally. And the ministry, the board of directors and the management of um, Port Authority are looking to see how best we can all be uh, dovetailing yeah. into this one ultimate objective that, that they're trying to achieve. Right? Because the IMO is talking about two major things digitalization mm. and decarbonization and this just dovetail into decarbonization for the IMO agenda this is this is great like serious this is great but you you very you made mention and I went back to seafaring because yes, it, I, I feel it's a very important last time we had this conversation we were talking about people actually having a fear of actually being a seafarer yes. now reason for this is because you leave home uh, months upon months and mm -hmm. you go to well, different okay. countries you could there there are so many dangers that are that are actually in the sea but you mentioned ub and uh, uh, we're here still talking about the, the seafaring fact are we being thought properly of how to be seafarers especially in the educational system well i believe that we've we are making some tremendous strides heading down in that direction mm -hmm. Uh, uh, certainly, from the Belize Port Authority standpoint, we are in the process of recognizing maritime training centers. We are collaborating with the Ministry of Education so that then we can have programs within uh, UB and others so that then it, is, it becomes readily available mm -hmm. for people to enter into the seafaring um, uh, uh, arena. Uh, furthermore, you may have recalled that we are opening opportunities 
Right, but the last time you were here, we were yes. talking about scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. yes. for persons yes. in the authority yes. to go outside. Yeah. So we are preparing that foundation, right? But nonetheless, it is also prevalent outside where the maritime industry, uh, in, in our neighbors, Honduras, do have several schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may be a, um, a challenge there in terms of language, but Jamaica... We can do it. We can do, we it. Can do it. Of course. <laughs> Once you have the will, it's mm -hmm. easy to get done. Yes. Yes. Of, of course. And in the U.S., I mean, we are very closely related with the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. And there are several schools there, you know. So I personally believe that um, we just need to have a change, a paradigm shift in terms of our attitude towards education. And rather than just looking at the traditional, mm. start and then shift towards a different, a and I believe a more robust yeah. uh, kind yes. of industry, as I had st stated recently that. Uh, and we saw it yesterday on the news where at BTB is demonstrating that an opportunity exists for seafarers to enter fully into the tourism industry. So if you are um, in the hospitality management business, then it is available for you to become a seafarer to work on those cruise ships that travels over, uh, over, yeah. over, over um, several voyages within yeah. the Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in the Middle East, in, in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, you know. So who is a seafarer? <laughs> how, do you, how, how does one become a seafarer? Does it, 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 once you get on the ship, you become a seafarer or you're there, referred to as a seafarer? It doesn't the, matter what your career is? You see... Right now, let me just, just to point on that, right? The people who perhaps went to set and have hospitality management or a bartender or um, a, uh, how can I call it, AC expert, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The vessel is almost like a house, yeah. right? Where you have... It's a, a big hotel, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But then, just put it relevant that you have electrical, you have your fridge, you have entertainment, it's the same thing that is on the vessel. And then you educate yourself, perhaps through set, to get that diploma or that certificate or that degree specific to, let's say, um, bartending. Bartending. Mm -hmm. Right? Electrical engineering. Yes, those kinds of things. Now, to become a seafarer, one then has to do a, the, what is called the STCW, the Standards of Training, Certification, and Watchkeeping course, uh, the basic safety course. Um, once you've completed the, safe, the basic safety course, along with perhaps uh, the, the vessel familiarization and um, maritime security awareness and crowd control, those are just some of the basic course. And those can be done perhaps within two weeks. Mm. Once, those, you, once you've successfully completed those courses, then you apply for a seaman document, mm. which is issued by Imarbe. All right? And once you have that document, you've passed those courses, you have that document, you are on your way to being a seafarer, to be employed on one of those international maritime going um, vessels. Wow. Apart from being a, a seafarer, though, um, do we have other interests for people to come into the Belize Port Authority? What else um, can they be employed to do? Well, I believe I have, I continue to make the point that let us look at the environment. The ship needs to be guided in. That's palletage. Um, then the goods need to be taken off, right? Mm -hmm. Those are container operations, mm -hmm. right? So it needs TV doors, port workers, right. right? Then it's taken off from the ship, then transported into the yard. That is container op operations, warehousing. Then you need people who will uh, drive those forklifts, those cranes. So there are several employment Oppor just opportunities, opportunities on there. within, all right? And there's training and education, professional development for those kinds of um, uh, uh, career that we are looking at. So it's World Maritime Day, meaning yes, it it's is. not just the Belize Port Authority, but the International Maritime Association. Yes. What are some of the activities that we can look forward yeah, to? I want to celebrate. Yeah, okay, well... At this time, this is part of making awareness to focus on World Maritime Day. Mm -hmm. And we also have several other stakeholders who are part and parcel of the maritime environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so certainly what we will be doing is to 
to give some um, 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 remarks focusing on like uh, Imarbe, who is a partner uh, in the international shipping, mm -hmm. will certainly look at <coughs> what innovations they are bringing on to the table and they will demonstrate that to Belize and to the world. The Department of Environment is specifically geared towards the protection of the marine environment along yes. with Port Authority. Yes. So they will also give their perspective in terms of new technologies for greener shipping onto the stage mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. There is also the um, Belize Coast Guard, again, another large maritime um, entity who will also bring their perspective in and vision and strategy towards um, uh, the greener technologies for um, for greener te new technology for greener shipping. Yeah, uh, certainly blue economy and certainly build, uh, put uh, put authority. So we are all collaborating to give our vision, our strategy, as directed certainly by the ministry, our respective ministry, yeah, our respective boards, those who have boards, and mm -hmm. certainly the, the management and staff of those respective organizations. Because together we could do it. That much I can together tell we you. can. Together we we shall. Do, do, okay. do we get a chance to see any other ships? <laughs> you, you just want a pump boat. You know, you, you know, you know. Um, um, th th this young man have had several opportunities, but he's so busy that he never wants to take the opportunity, right? <laughs> so you can't see the boat, John. You can't see the boat. <laughs> so it's going to be a day to celebrate, uh, and of course, World um, World Maritime, world Maritime day, day is being celebrated when Thursday, Thursday the twenty ninth. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's actually the day. Uh, some countries opted to have done it before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Some countries actually up to do it on the same day, and there will also be other countries to do it after. Okay. okay. Uh, so it's like a yes. half hour week. Almost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yesterday we um, put authority, we were invited to to listen to um, Trinidad and Tobago and some other organization where they had a symposium, mm -hmm. and certainly uh, we were, we are planning a symposium, but. That will certainly be next year, so we are preparing the foundation. Okay. So we have a big symposium for next year World Maritime Day, where we invite international stakeholders to come to our stage to give their success stories and their experience. Yeah. So well, we are looking forward to well, that. Major, yeah. um, any final words for viewers? Happy World Maritime Day. Yes. Well, certainly, um, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to always come to Channel Five uh, with a view to inform our Belizean and the world of what is it that we are doing in relation to ensure that we become continue to be relevant within the maritime industry. Mm -hmm. The focus is for us now to start thinking for new technology for greener shipping for, for a sustainable future because it is not only the maritime that is impacting but it, uh, the ships impact the entire environment That's which right. is not only maritime it has to do with the terrestrial and everything else yeah so it is to start to invite everyone for us to join hands and look at solutions that will certainly ensure that we have a more sustainable future particularly as it relates to the maritime so i want to wish everyone a happy world maritime day in fact on behalf of the ministry the board of directors and the management of staff of Belize, Port Authority, and all our stakeholders. Happy World Maritime Day, Belize. All right. All right. Thank you so Thank very you much, man. It's, uh, it's always a good time to chatting with you there, Major. Feel um, the passion. Yeah, yeah. it's the passion either, but he could tell you yeah. exactly where that screw means on the boat. And how you know Jan no gone on the boat yet. <laughs> hey, we're going to take a break when we come back. If you know what I'll be about. Ah, uh, we are fine. Oh, Super G, and tell me. You so you don't know what B box you are. No. Sorry, I I just well, you grow know what? up. Not even me. But we're gonna find <laughs> out coming up in just a few. You want to stay with us? We'll be right back. <laughs>